I'm about to unveil the six games that I think will be revealed this summer. I am so excited you could hang a towel on it. Scratch that. Every towel on Copacabana Beach. Scratch that. Every towel on Copacabana Beach soaked in water. Every single one there. That's how excited I am that these games I think will be revealed this summer. Check it out. Have you ever had blue balls? And I'm talking the worst blue balls you've ever had. Agony, aching, you just wanted to die. Well, I can top that. The Elder Scrolls 6. The wait for the Elder Scrolls 6 is the worst blue balls any gamer can endure. It is horrid. So Skyrim come out in 2011. We are now 2024. 13 years and we're still waiting. Now I believe Starfield is a huge, huge mistake. Don't get me wrong, some people like it and it's going to have its own fan base for sure. But I believe that Elder Scrolls 6 should have been first. You've done Fallout 4, you've done Fallout 76, you then want to do something completely new that you've never done, which was Starfield. But I think before Starfield, bring out the Elder Scrolls 6. We've been waiting long enough. It's one of the most rich worlds in terms of lore. There is non-stop texts, tomes, stories. That the history, the different ages, the different eras, the different races, it's just incredible. I mean, you, Elder Scrolls is a game where you play it, you lose yourself. Take a month off work, you ain't going in. You ain't going in. You're going to be sitting there thinking how you can cast destruction spells, conjuration, how you're going to summon, summon a, a frost atronach. That's what you're doing. Your mind is non-stop Elder Scrolls when you play that game. It is one of the most immersive games out there. So, I believe that... They dropped the trailer in 2018, and it was only a 30 second trailer for The Elder Scrolls 6, just to say, hey, it does exist, we acknowledge it exists, hold tight, we got you. It's now 2024. It started full development last year. So I believe if they was to show a trailer, it doesn't have to be gameplay, even though there's early playable builds actually out there being played within the studio. I believe that they can just show a trailer, a cinematic trailer, just to keep us ticking over, just to keep us in the mindset that, okay, this, this game is coming, it's not dead, it is, it is going to come out. Um, and I think that'll be something that fans would really appreciate. I mean, Starfield, they're going to be doing DLC for it and stuff like that, yeah, so that's probably might be the focus of the Bethesda Showcase this summer, but it would be really cool to see The Elder Scrolls 6. Just have a little 30 seconds, 60 seconds, just something for us to, to you know, lick our lips over, something to sit there and go, okay, it's coming. Let's have a deep breath. The dog on laxatives, this shit is going to keep coming. The predictions are flowing, and let's get straight into it with Doom. Uh, Doom The Dark Ages is apparently what the title is going to be called. Now, there's many rumours circulating that, that that could be the final name of the game. Maybe, I'm not sure, but June the 9th we will find out. The uh, Summer Games Fest will be on and the um, Xbox uh, Games Showcase will be going. So it will be really interesting to see if uh, that is the name of the title. Apparently there's rumours that it's going to be a medieval setting. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. It's not too far from the current setting. I mean, it's kind of like goth slash demonic. So it's, it's, it's not a far cry from... Um, the last Doom Eternal. So I think the uh, settings, the, the character art, um, the environments, there's a lot of possibilities if they go down the medieval route, which I find really interesting compared to, to what they have done recently. Now there is another rumor, this is a two for one, we're, we're giving it away here. Apparently Quake may be in development, the next uh, iteration of Quake from the same studio who is making Doom. So id software could possibly be developing two games at once i don't believe so i think doom has had four years since it was released which is 2020 i think now is the perfect time for them to bring out the next doom um i'm super pumped for it i'm excited i have one gripe with doom eternal i didn't like the ancient gods dlc i didn't enjoy it at all it just wasn't for me the enemy variety i didn't enjoy so Doom the Dark Ages is one of my predictions. Um, let's get prepared to be covered in blood, in guts, and um, yeah, slapping some demon ass, so to speak. Now Nintendo fans, fear not, I haven't forgot. And uh, it is one of the games I play to this day that I've been playing for decades, it's Mario Kart. Every Friday I play Mario Kart tournament with family, non without fail, without fail. Absolutely adore it, especially with the booster passes as well. 
Now, IGN have reported that it has been in development since January 2022. So with game cycles nowadays in about four or five years, maybe six at the most, we could be waiting around 25, 26 to see it. So hopefully next year would be the earliest, I'd say. So this summer, I do predict we'll see something Mario Kart related. Mario Kart 9, maybe. Mario Kart Double Dash 2 would be preferred. I love Mario Kart Double Dash, my favorite of all of them. And I would love to see that return with the updated graphics and new characters. Now, I believe Double Dash 2 is not just wanted, it's needed. Mario Kart needs a little refresh. I mean, the booster, the booster courses were amazing. A lot of OG classics in there as well really enjoyed it. But you can't just keep rehashing it and saying, here's some more tracks, here's some more tracks. Here's... No, we, we need to change up. And I think Double Dash 2 would be perfect for that. Instead of the one racer, you'll have the two again. Instead of uh, everyone having set weapons, you'll have your specialist weapons. Like you had the big shell in Double Dash. You had the big banana from Donkey Kong that when you went on it, it split into three bananas. All those good things there. I think it could be a great thing to refresh the Mario Kart franchise and not let it get stale and, how do you say, kind of age poorly because all you're doing is just adding tracks, adding tracks, adding tracks. It's time to refresh. And Mario Kart 8 come out a long time ago. So granted they brought out the booster courses, which was great. It refreshed the game and I really enjoyed the courses. Some of the classics there are my favorites. DK Mountain. The game is ready and I think this summer we will see something. We have to see something. I mean, even on my channel, I've got tournament playing with my family on there because I love the game so much. Every Friday without fail, I'll be playing it. So who knows, by next year we could be throwing shells, <laughs> bananas, having a good old time. Who knows? So another show that has spawned from a video game, The Last of Us. Oh, this one really divides me because The Last of Us, the first game, was incredible. Loved it, fell in love with it, knew nothing about it when I played it, that was it. Fell in love with the story, the characters Joel and Ellie, their relationship, how it developed throughout the game. Amazing. Not to mention graphics were some of the best for the time. Incredible. Now this is where my problem comes. The Last of Us Part 2, I didn't enjoy it. Spoiler ahead, I'm spilling the beans, baked beans, Heinz tin, pouring it right in that bowl right now. Joel died early on in that game. That took the wind out of my sails because they lied in the trailer where they showed Joel talking to Ellie about an adventure they're about to embark on. They swapped that character over with another. Joel wasn't the person she was talking to in the game. They'd done that on purpose to mislead us in the advertising, which hurt me, that crushed me. So, Last of Us 2 didn't enjoy it. Not just Joel dying, the story was very fragmented and broken. It was jumping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You played half the game as the person who killed Joel. Yeah, I get it. You might want to understand the enemy and their story and where they've come from and what's their mindset. Didn't care for it. It didn't save it. It made me hate the character even more. I felt no sympathy for her whatsoever. And then to end it all, to end it all, Ellie is at the end. Damaged hurt, injured, mentally broken, has no one around her that she loves, Joel, nobody, absolutely nobody. She walks off on her own into the wilderness, missing a finger so she can't even play guitar anymore. The one thing that used to soothe her. And that's how they left it. How can you leave a beloved game series on such a sad, morbid cliffhanger? Absolute craziness. With the show series two premiering next year, 2025, it's a good chance that they could show something this summer of The Last of Us Part 3. It would be smart, it would be great, it's been four years since the last game was released, so they've had a lot of time to develop the third. And uh, I think it could be a smart idea to coincide with the Series 2 premiere. Even if it's just after the show is released, it'd be smart to bring out then because the hype, the popularity is at all time high, and you can capitalize on that. So I think that The Last of Us Part 3 could possibly be shown this summer. Some sort of trailer, some sort of cinematic, maybe just something for us to see and get an idea of. Maybe next year we'll see more, maybe next year it'll be released. Who knows? I'm excited for it. I would prefer if they went back to The Last of Us 1 and 2 between those games with Joel and Ellie. See their story and their relationship develop even more. Because going onto a sequel from 2, Joel's dead. Ellie's broken mentally and physically. Abby's gone missing with some kid. Where do you go from there? I mean, it just... I don't know how they could save it. It would really, really shock me if they can, but for me, the best way they could do it would be between one and between two, show something there. That would be a, a great way to explore the relationship ground between Joel and Ellie. Towards the end, Joel and Ellie 
kind of started to drift apart, especially Ellie. She started to really resent Joel. So maybe we could see some of that. So uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see. And uh, I think this summer we might see something. Hopefully not a golf club killing off main characters. Don't need to see that anymore. Let's hope. Now with the release of the Fallout TV series, which was amazing by the way. Fallout is a popular game right now. Everyone's jumped back on Fallout 3, Fallout 4, even Fallout 76. The numbers are flying. They're, they're, every, every one of the games are popular right now. I've jumped back on Fallout 76 myself and it's incredible. I'm really enjoying it. So for me, this is the best time for Bethesda to jump on this right now. Fallout's there for the taking. Get it out there, be it a remaster, be it a sequel, whatever they can do, get it out there because right now it is popular. So for me, Fallout 5 ain't coming. It's not coming. I hate to disappoint you. I hate to be the party pooper. You know, drop that bomb in you right now. That bombshell is just blown your way, I know. But Fallout 5 is miles away because you've got the Elder Scrolls 6 that's just started full development last year. That's going to take four or five years minimum. Then it'll be another four or five years developing Fallout 5. So you could be waiting another decade before a sequel comes out. But fret not, people. Fret not. Fallout 3 Remaster is circulating. It, everyone's reporting right now that Fallout 3 Remaster could be the next thing to come out. And it makes sense because it would obviously jump on the Fallout TV series parade, so to speak. The popularity. So they could jump on the popularity of the show right now by making a Fallout 3 Remaster. It would be a smart idea from them. And Fallout 3 is an incredible game. I mean, people say Fallout New Vegas is the best. Okay, that's the, uh, most people would agree. So they could they could remaster that possibly and remaster Fallout 3 over the next year or two. But with the show going into full production series 2, they could sync with the show releasing Fallout 3 remaster at the same time the show's released, the series 2. And that would be a smart move from Bethesda. Um, the leaks, I believe, were revealed in the Microsoft Activision acquisition trial um, that Fallout 3 remaster could be on the way. I mean, it might get the Skyrim treatment where it's just an update in graphics, a few extra mods thrown in there, maybe. I don't think it will be fully from the ground up remake, it's not happening. It'll just be probably a remaster, but even so, as fans would be grateful. And I believe this summer we could get a trailer of something to do with a Fallout remaster. Most likely Fallout 3 from the reports I've read. So who knows, this year we could be splitting some super mutant skulls and stomping on some red roaches. Fingers crossed, but that's one of my predictions for this summer. We'll get that samurai sword sharpened and prepare to get your balls squashed on a horse saddle because in Ghost of Tsushima you can't do nothing but just ride through beautiful fields and just appreciate the absolute incredible graphics that this game has produced. I mean it is near enough photorealistic, it is incredible. The scenery, the music is some of the best I have ever heard. I was enthralled by this game. I mean, I saw the trailers and stuff come in and I was like, oh wow, this game looks, you know, breathtaking. But then the story piled on. The characters were incredible. They were, they had depth. The stories linked up into the main quest as well, which I found incredible because so many games, side quests mean nothing. In this one, it tied into it. And I really appreciate that. So for me, four years ago, Ghost of Tsushima came out and I am so confident. I'm so sure that Ghost of Tsushima 2 must be getting even a even a reveal trailer that doesn't say it's coming out this winter but possibly next year winter something like that ghost of tsushima scored 83 on metacritic the, the ratings were crazy all across the reviews were booming everyone loved ghost of tsushima so i think it's currently getting a pc release which i think was very successful so that just goes to show how it's not just the playstation audience it's also the audience for pc they're loving it as well this game has so much potential and i really really strongly believe there'll be a reveal trailer i'm not saying there's going to be gameplay and showing everything but at least some sort of cinematic trailer just to get the uh, the pot starting to boil just to simmer getting the crowd starting to murmur getting people start asking questions of what possibly could be in the next iteration of ghost of tsushima also, the DLC, uh, Iki Island, was amazing. I mean, it was just an expansion of the main game itself. It wasn't some little DLC that you just pick up and do in a couple of hours. It was a whole new island. It was incredible. A whole new setting, a whole new scenery to uh, sit there and just soak up like a sponge in a sink full of water. You're just soaking up. You're just loving it. So we can dive straight in a hot spring, wash that shitty ah. ass, and get straight back to the amazing combat and the amazing scenery this game offers. Okay, 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 let's take a deep breath, 
we come to the end, the excitement simmering down, and um, I would really like to know if you agree with any of the six games. If you have a completely different list, let me know. Put it in the comments. And let me see. So drop a like, subscribe, all the good stuff if you enjoyed this, and um, subscribe because we will be revisiting this to see if any of our predictions were right. Hopefully they were. Um, if it is, then full house. Bingo. Wave it in the air. Hey, 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 I've won. Full house. We're in. Um, but who knows? I mean, I've done it with my heart rather than my mind. And that's what gaming's about. It's passion and love. So that's it for now, people. Until next time, if you see a squirrel, stroke its knee. I'll see you later.